Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with an introduction for my beauty budget for 2023. I did wrap up my beauty budget for 2022 yesterday so this is the video going up after and I'm really excited to share with you kind of my plans for the new year, um, what has changed, what's staying the same. Um, a lot of this will be staying in the same but as I mentioned yesterday in my video there's going to be a massive twist to my low buy slash no buy. You might have already seen a little bit of it in the thumbnail slash the, intro, the title of the video. I haven't quite decided if I'm going to tease it there or not, but yeah, there's going to be a big twist this year uh, and I'm excited to jump into it. But before I do so, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. I would love to have you in the family. Let's jump into the video. So if you're new to my beauty budget series, uh, just quickly, this was inspired by Emily and Max, mainly here on YouTube. Also Steph from It's Just Steph is doing this a similar kind of project as well. Um, I also did a beauty budget way back um, in 2018 I believe, but it was more kind of like just counting what I brought in and what I emptied. But it's kind of all inspired by those kind of um, things. But I will have both Steph and Emily down below as they kind of are the people that I saw do this again and that kind of inspired me to start this last year. So again, this year is going to be quite similar to last year, uh, but I'm going to go through the rules that I have this year. Some of them again are the same, but if you are new here, I will come with them anyway. So this year, First of all, let's just go with a big twist. So, I have decided that this year of 2023, I'm gonna be on an eyeshadow no buy. I know, I'm a bit scared. <laughs> but um, the thing is, last year, like when I buy things, like when most of my beauty budget points last year were spent on eyeshadows. And that is what I want to buy. It's like what draws me in, it's what, like, what I like, you know, get excited about buying. And it means I kind of, you know, especially when I had a low buy, I kind of just save the points for that. And I was like, oh, I don't need another blush, I don't need another foundation. Although there's definitely still other products, beauty products that I am excited to try. But I just always prefer the eyeshadows. And I mean, it's all good and well to buy new eyeshadows. Until it gets to a point when you have so many eyeshadows and you haven't even used all eyeshadows in your collection. Um that I just feel like enough is enough. I just need to stop this behavior a bit. And I have so many eyeshadows in my collection. I have so many beautiful eyeshadows in my collection. I've bought so many like indie eyeshadows in the past year and I can't wait to play around them with them. Like when I got all the parcels I got in the past year and anytime I get a new kind of, especially indie eyeshadow parcel, I am just blown away with the quality and I want to play around with those things more. So I feel like with that, I, I mean, I have enough eyeshadow as it is. I decided to go on a no buy for eyeshadows this year. There are a couple exceptions though, and let's just cover those first. So, I am, when it comes to eyeshadows, I am still allowed to buy something if it is one limited edition, um, then I am about to, like, I'm allowed to buy it. So for example, um, now it's been two years, I think it must have been two years ago, right? That Club Nebula came out, and I was so excited for that palette, and I really wanted it. It came out, and that was limited edition and I picked it up. And if something similar to that would happen to, again, I am allowed to pick that up. Also, I didn't forget to add this in terms of rule, but there is a palette that I've been wanting, but it's out, been out of stock for months and months and months. And I'm worried it's not, not gonna come back again. But if it does, I am gonna pick that up. And that is the Flower Punk palette from Kaleidos. That is gonna be the only palette that I'm allowed to pick up that isn't limited edition or something like that. Um, but I really want that palette and I'm worried that they're gonna discontinue it and it's not gonna come back. So if it does come back, I'm gonna pick that up. But other than that, I don't really have any other palette exceptions. The second rule that I have is that if there's something I'm wanting anyway and it goes on a really, really good sale, I'm allowed to pick it up. Um, mainly, obviously, this is gonna happen during Black Friday. I am gonna allow myself to buy things on Black Friday. I'm gonna try to limit how many things I buy, but I am gonna be allowed to buy eyeshadows on Black Friday. Uh, additionally to that, there are a couple of brands that I know don't really do Black Friday sales and if they do, they're not as big as other sales throughout the year. One brand I'm specifically thinking about is Sydney Grace. They do the Christmas in July sale and again, I might allow myself to buy something there. However, it's going to be very minimal and it's going to be like nothing like the orders I've done in the past two years. But, you know, it's something I'm debating, but again, the one big sale of the year I might allow myself to buy from, but 
again, I, I, right now I don't really have anything on Cindy Grace wishlist because I bought everything last year. But, you know, I might find a few handful things that I want to buy. And if so, I'm going to allow myself to buy that during that sale. But again, it needs to be on a really good sale and it needs to be something that I want anyway. So, those are the main things. The biggest exception of my no buy for eyeshadow this year comes to, or it goes to Cleona. <laughs> Cleona is my, like I'm a basically a collector of Cleona stained glass eyeshadows now. I have every single one they have, apart from the latest one they released. Um, they released the shade Solder, which is a new formula of theirs. It's the Dimensional Multichrome. And I did actually make an order from them during the um, like Christmas sale. But I didn't buy any eyeshadows. I did buy nail polishes from them because I'm really excited to try them. And I was really, really close to picking up solder. But I thought they're going to release that as a collection. They're going to release it as a new formula. It might not be until the end of the year. And that's fine by me. But when they do, I'm going to allow myself to buy that. Because I used I have every eyeshadow from Cleona. I don't need all of them. But it's like a collector thing. So if that comes out, I'm going to allow myself to buy that. But... Again, that's like the only brand that's going to happen with. And I know I have all of these exceptions, like the sales and everything. But I'm really, really, really going to try to not buy any eyeshadow this year. But I'm giving myself the option. Because I feel like if I give myself a complete, like, harsh no. Um, I'm not sure I will be able to keep it up all year. But ideally, I'm going to try to not buy anything until Black Friday. Uh, during Black Friday, I already am planning a purchase, and that is going to be from Davina. I want to try Davina for a long time. I always been more interested in like Tara Rose, Pastel Roses, Cleona, obviously. But this like past couple months, I really have been interested in Davina. I've already created a wish list from them, but I'm going to wait until again they have a really good sale. And I think Black Friday is when they have the best sale. If I'm wrong and you know Davina, let me know down below. Um, but I think that's going to be the one kind of big purchase I make this year. But again, I'm really, really going to try to limit the amount of items I bring in this year. I ideally, it would be like zero, but you know, that would be an ideal world. <laughs> but that's the basically the big twist for my no buy this year or low buy this year. It's going to be a no buy eyeshadow kind of rule. So that is that part of the rules. Let's move into the remaining rules again, how I earn points and everything. And these first ones are going to stay the same. Two empties are going to equal one point. Five pans is going to equal one point. And five declutters is also going to equal one point. That's the same as last year. Um, additionally, two finished eyeshadows is also going to equal one point. I had that last year as well. That is, uh, when I say eyeshadows, I mean, for example, like even like a single potted eyeshadow counts. But why I have that rule is because if I finish an eyeshadow in a palette, that counts towards one eyeshadow finished. Whereas... It doesn't go into my empties until it's, the whole palette is empty. So that is another point for two finished eyeshadows. Um, additionally, replacements is not in the budget. Same as last year, if I buy a replacement mascara. If I'm completely out of powders and I buy a powder, that's again a, a replacement. And then again, I do want to continue the rule of four lip products. I can only bring in one for every two that I finish. So I do want to continue getting my lip product collection down or like I guess two products out so if I declutter something again that kind of counts. Um, and then lastly the rule that I have changed a little bit this year is that I want to have max five single blushes come into my collection. Last year I had that maximum of three but I higher that to five because I want to give myself a little bit more leeway and like basically allow myself to buy a couple if I want to because I did really good last year of decluttering blushes and yeah I just want to give myself the option to buy some and that is basically just because I want to be able to give myself a little bit more options to buy blushes if I want to uh, but those are the rules so I have been talking about points and if you're wondering if you're new to this kind of idea of a low buy and um, what I mean by points is for every one point earned you can get by you get to buy one beauty product so um or like rather makeup for me at least uh so if i earn like one point i can spend that on one product and that can be any product like it could be a lipstick it can be a, a lip liner it could be a blush um a foundation powder anything just as long as it's one product last year when i was allowing myself to buy uh, eyeshadows i also had an additional rule that 10 singles equaled one point because you know with singles 
usually what I shows you come like at least 10 eyeshadows in a palette anyway but since I'm gonna try not to buy any eyeshadows this year I didn't really mention that rule but that's how my low buy is gonna work uh, lastly last year I only allowed myself to I started with zero points so all the points that I had last year I earned so I had to start at the base level I didn't allow myself any point to start with uh, however this year I am gonna allow myself the points that are rolling over from last year so at the end of last year I had 11 points that weren't spent yet so I'm allowing myself to roll this over to this year because it is still points that I potentially could have spent last year I still earned them last year and I could have spent them but I decided not to so I'm gonna roll them over just to have a little bit more to play with this year and so that is my starting point so Again, my starting point for January is going to be 11 points and whatever I bring in in the next month, if I bring anything in in the next month, I'm going to share with you in the next update. So that is it for my little uh, low buy or no buy uh, introduction. I really hope you enjoyed it and if you did, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Um, otherwise, I will catch you in my next one. Bye guys.